Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today we're going to be doing another integral that I got from uh, the channel Michael Penn. Um, but of course we're going to be solving it using the Leibniz rule for uh, differentiation under the integral sign, aka Feynman's trick, aka Feynman integration. Um, he solves it a, uh, a different way. Um, and in my opinion, using Feynman integration on this is actually a little bit easier. Um, we're going to have to use this identity, though. That is the alternating, the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the squares being equal to pi squared over 12. I made a video on that. Uh, which I will try to remember to link to in the description. And I think I'll also link to Michael Penn's video so you can see how he solved it. Um, chances are you've already seen his video, though. Um, so anyway, let's get started. Um, the first substitution we're going to make is that u is equal to e to the x. Therefore, du is equal to e to the x dx, but e to the x is just u, so we'll just say that dx is equal to du over u. All right, so that's going to give us i equals, let's see, the integral from e to the 0 is 1, e to the infinity is infinity, our x would be uh, natural log u, over, let's see, e to the x is u, so that's just u plus 1, and then our dx is uh, du over u. All right, uh, our next substitution, and I realize you could have done this all in one substitution. I just like doing it this way better. We're going to set uh, u equal to 1 over w. Therefore, du is equal to negative 1 over w squared dw. All right, well, what's that going to give us? Uh, so now we're going to have i is equal to, let's see, um, integral from 1 over infinity is 0, 1 over 1 is 1. Natural log 1 over w over... 1 over w plus 1 times 1 over w, um, and we'll just bring that to the top, um, and then we're going to have negative 1 over w squared dw, um, let's see, bring the negative outside, um, we'll use the properties of logarithms to make this negative natural log w. Um, we'll use that negative to switch our bounds of integration. Um, let's see. That was terrible. All right. Um, let's see. This w... We'll cancel with one of these W's, and then the remaining W will distribute back inside these parentheses, giving us just W plus 1. Alright, so there's a, there's a much nicer expression, in my opinion. Well, it's actually, you know, it's not much nicer than this. It still looks pretty bad. Um, but this is where uh, Feynman's trick comes in. So um, let's create a function of t that is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x, no, not x, w. No, we can, we can use x. We'll use x. Uh, x to the t over x plus 1 dw. Okay. Well, let's see. That means that f evaluated at 0 would give us integral 0 to 1 of 1 over x plus 1 dx. That's part of his estimate. 
So, um, let's see, that would just be natural log 2. All right, so now let's take f prime of t. f prime of t is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. Using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, we get natural log x times x to the t over x plus 1 dx. All right, now if we take negative f prime at 1, sorry, negative f prime at 0, we'll get i, right? We plug in 0 for t, that becomes x to the 0, which is 1, multiply by negative 1, and we just get this, which is i. All right. Right, so now we don't need this part. We don't need any of this stuff anymore. So we'll erase it. Okay, um, let's find a new expression for f of t. And we're going to use the fact that uh, 1 over x plus 1 is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n. Um, and that's good on our interval. So we can say that f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n dx. Okay, um, there's no problems with convergence if we uh, switch the integral and uh, uh, sigma notations. But first, we'll make this an x to the n plus t. We can bring that x to the t inside our sum since it does not depend on n. All right, and now we will switch our summation and integration notation. So we're just going to have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And then we'll bring the negative 1 to the n before the integral sign. And then we'll just have integral 0 to 1. Well, let's see. If we evaluate the integral, we'll just get 1 over n plus t plus 1. So that's negative one to the n over n plus t plus one. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Um, we're going to need to find f prime of t as a sum, though. That's easy, though. So that's going to be f prime of t is just going to be equal to the sum as n equals 0 to infinity of the derivative with respect to t of this thing right here. So we'll still have negative 1 to the n, but this is really n plus t plus 1 to the negative 1. So we'll get negative n plus t plus 1 to the negative 2, or just 1 over n plus t plus 1, all squared. Okay. All right, now we can easily find i um, by plugging in 0 to this expression right here and taking its negative. So i is going to be equal to, let's see, um, well, taking the negative, we'll just get rid of that negative sign, so we'll just have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus 1, because we're taking t at the point 0, and then all that squared. All right, um, we almost have this right here. Um, so what we'll do is we will add 1 to the index and then subtract 1 from all our n's inside the sum. All right, so that'll be n going from 1 to infinity now. And then we'll have n, negative 1 to the n minus 1, but that's really no different than negative 1 to the n 
plus um, and then n plus one minus one is just n so we have n squared in the denominator and as stated right here this is equal to pi squared over 12. at this point nothing concrete all right, guys, um, like I said, I, I believe this method for solving that integral is uh, a lot easier than the, uh, than the method that Michael Penn used. Um, but anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that.